serious uh, uh -huh. way of asking that question. I mean, obviously, when you left office, uh, you know, you didn't completely close any doors. No. I and and has that changed at all from the standpoint of saying, you know, at some point, is there still a contemplation that you might do something? I mean, I would never rule it out, Lou. But it's yeah. it's it is it is. I mean, you you could I'm sure tell the the, the priority for me is the time with the kids right now, and it's just I don't. I mean, I might serve on some appointed boards or things like that, but the but the, the, the day in, day out, seven days a week, eighteen hours a day, I, I can't, I can't, I can't fathom putting it in right now. But were, what were, uh, what was a a good time? Uh, and uh, you know, you're a straight shooter, so please, nothing too sappy for me. But uh, what, what? What would you consider something that you really miss? And is there any kind of specific example, you know, of something like that? that you yeah, really that's a great miss? question. There, I mean, it's really interesting to, the way you said it because if you ask me, do I have any regrets about retiring? Zero. Are there things I miss? Lots. Uh, I miss. I, I I spent a tremendous amount of time studying the policy, and I miss knowing. I mean, I knew this stuff, and and there's a kind of a an intellectual challenge to trying to see how it works and both pros and cons. I miss that. I, I miss, this sounds sappy, but I miss lots of the people. I mean, you know, it's literally fun to see you guys get it really kids. Um, I miss, uh, travel gets a bad name, but I miss the travel. I miss being able, uh, I mean, for example, I, one of my last trips I got to meet Bashir Assad. That, that's relevant to today, and, and, and I have some, some thoughts about what, what's happened there and, and why, et cetera. And, and, and I miss being able to, to have some impact on some of those global issues as well. Yeah, uh, what about the biggest mistake that you made while in Congress? Oh, uh, boy. And don't give me, you know, I didn't spend enough time sleeping. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, no, I took that for granted. I, yeah. Uh, there are some votes that I wish I had back. Uh, Give me I, a couple of examples. Uh, no Child Left Behind. Uh, probably, I think that's the, the vote I, I regret the most. And the reason is I knew, I, knew that the, I knew there were profound flaws in the bill. I knew that. And, I, and the only reason I voted for it was, was our leadership told us that if we didn't vote for that, the result would be much worse. And, and I bought it. I mean, I bought the line because of the makeup of the, of the Congress at the time. And, but I think it's such a flawed bill, and I think it has just some fundamental, logical, and rational errors in it that have caused real consequences to our schools. That, that, and because there was a promise of funding that never was delivered. And, but as I look back at that, I, there are things I said, if this becomes a lot, this is going to be a problem. And I really didn't like it. And we had George Miller and I think John Kerry, but certainly George Miller was, was big on this. And, and, and he was, you know, this is the best deal we're going to get. Here's what's so much worse they'll put before us. And I wish I'd have just stood the ground and said, even if this is our best bad deal, it's still a bad deal. Yeah. One, one last question from me uh, for the moment. Um, the infamous uh, public hearing that you held. Uh, Which one? <laughs> well, the one at the amphitheater. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Any, uh, looking back on that, would you have handled that any differently? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean, you, th you think about it. Other people have had no, I, I might have phrased the, the, I would have phrased the rationale for not holding them differently, and I've already expressed the regrets of the language I use. But when people say that their goal is to, when they say online, here are our tactics for preventing an intellectual discussion, we don't want there to be reason. We don't want there to be dialogue. We want to just disrupt, embarrass, humiliate. That creates a really destructive environment. We found a way, but it took us a while. I mean, the environment, Lou, was so different. I mean, I'd had more town halls than almost anybody I know, as you know, and they'd always been informal and and open, and and we took plenty of tough questions, and and uh, that environment was different. We just didn't know how to deal with it. We, I mean, how do you, 
how do you go from sort of anybody's welcome to come, ask whatever questions they want, we'll treat each other with respect, to let's strategically mob the place, shout folks down. We, we took us a while to figure out how to do it. It really did. And we, you know, we realized you're going to need a very big venue so you don't have these mob scenes of people trying to get in. You're going to have to have a different way to field questions so that it's not, you know, people shouting each other down or claiming favoritism. Uh, we're going to have to have a different structure to it. And it, it literally took us some time to sort that out. You know, the, 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 a sad thing about the David Hedricks deal is what he said was false. I mean, that's what one of the ironies about that is he became famous for a completely false accusation, said with great fervor, but false. <laughs> you know, watch this guy give it to the Congress. Keep your hands off our kids. The assertion was that there was something in the health care bill that would allow federal people to invade your home and tell you how to raise your kids. Absolutely patently false. And it was a sort of a fact-free zone. And so what do you do when somebody gets up and is screaming about something that's false and you say to them, well, that's not in there, and... A thousand people applaud even though it's false. You know, yeah. facts are facts, and you know, uh, um, sadly, that was that was sort of popular at the time. Yeah. I think. We actually, you know, we had. I'm happy and, and not proud of myself, but proud of our democratic republic. Subsequent to that, we actually had some pretty darn productive town halls on the health care issue, where we actually talked health care. You know, we had a. Uh, I thought some really good meetings in, in Cowlitz County, for example, Pacific County. We had a lot of them, and and they were pretty productive. And I and I, I actually take some pride that <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not easy to stand one person with a crowd of three and a half thousand people, some of whom are really angry at you. In some cases, for inaccurate reasons, but it's not easy to stand there as one person and right. deal with that. And I not only had that town hall, we had town halls in Olympia and Longview and Centralia and, and at the coast. So we had a lot of them. <laughs> and it would have been easy to just say no more. But it did yeah. take us a time, you know, and, the, and the, the telephone town halls we did were not a dodge. They were, they were a, a way to try to maintain contact during a time while we sorted it out. Yeah. And we, we found a way to sort it do out. You, do you think this is a phase that's based on 